All right, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually gonna be talking about my DCLI tool that I've been creating for a few weeks now. It's been a month, I don't know how long it's been. But, uh, but yeah, so I have made some pretty substantial updates to it. One being that I have transitioned from a extremely long bash script <laughs> uh, to Rust instead. I went with Rust because of the speed and it's now you know self-contained without the need of the external uh, dependencies and everything. So uh, what I noticed was if you had a lot of modules um, with the old bash implementation, um, you would have a lot of different, it would start like kind of lagging and, and taking a while to you know load your actual like sync and, and things like that. So I wanted to speed things up. So I went ahead and kind of rewrote everything in uh, Rust. Um, I'm not a Rust developer by any means. So it did take you know, a little while and I needed some help from other, some other people to kind of get things to where it is now. And I did use, you know, Cloud Code a little bit for some debugging and, you know, getting things, uh, you know, fixed and where I needed to be as of now. So now everything is uh, working and running and I did make it so you can, uh, the, the new install script is installing the new version of uh, Rust itself. We do need to make sure that you do have uh, the Rust toolchain uh, cargo installed. So, you know, install that first if you don't already have it installed and then uh, you can just run the install script to install the actual uh, tool itself. And then if you are on the old batch version and you want to, you know, upgrade to the Rust version, I did add some instructions here and a, you know, quick uh, migration option uh, for you to update your uh, information. And if you do update it, you do not need to recreate your arch config folder or do anything different. It will, you know, pick up where you left off. And so you won't have to do anything there. So everything as far as your YAML files are unchanged and modules and hooks and everything that you've created have been unchanged as well. So um, all that will stay the same. You don't have to, you know, change anything for that. So everything's good there. And then for anybody new um, coming in and uh, kind of wondering like what DCLI is, I kind of just want to briefly go over that. Anybody else can you know, kind of skip past this part if you want to. But so basically uh, DCLI is a tool that I created. I had used uh, NixOS for quite a while and I I just loved a lot of the different aspects of NixOS, but I missed the uh, rolling release and the package packages port and things like that from Arch itself. So what I did was actually kind of create a tool that kind of brought a lot of those Nix like Nix like features into the Arch uh, system here. So essentially, you know, kind of the main things is the package management. So everything is you know declared in the arch config file so that way you can add your packages into the actual uh, config and this makes it easy to um, declare your actual packages and then you do run the dcli sync to install them and then you can also create modules within your system so that way you can have uh, different modules that you create so i can show you that real quick so in my arch config here so you can see I have multiple different hosts um, that I have installed, and then I have a bunch of different modules um, that I have installed here. So like I just recently created the CLI apps YAML. So this way I have um, all of these like CLI packages that I want to you know have in my system. A lot of them are just like, you know, for rising and some are, um, you know, functional, but so yeah, so I have them all in one, you know, module. So all I have to do is actually just, you know, run the DCLI module enable, and then I can enable these, this module and then install it onto my system. So I can show you exactly you know what that looks like so I think I already have it enabled so if I do the list it'll show me all the everything that I have enabled and disabled so if I go to CLI so I do have the CLI um, one enabled right now so I can kind of show you how this works so I can do a DCLI module disable and then um, it'll show me all the ones that I do have enabled so I can disable the um, CLI tool option there. So it does show that it is uh, disabled now. So if I do a DCLI um, sync with prune, so I do have the DCLI auto prune on. So it works a lot more like the uh, rebuild would on our actual NixOS configuration. So that way, anything that you remove will automatically be removed every time you sync. Anything you add will automatically be added anytime you sync. So I don't have to run the prune option, but if you don't have that um, enabled in your configuration, then you will have to have uh, the prune to remove applications. Otherwise, it's only going to add. So I can do a DCLI sync. And then so now it's saying all the packages that are going to be removed um, right here. And then so I can go ahead and say yes. Uh, might help if I put my password in right, but yeah, so I just removed all of those packages and then 
all of those were, you know, successfully removed. And now it's just updating the package state and it's showing that I already have, you know, six different hooks uh, that are already, you know, installed on my system. Um, so now that it's complete, you can see there that I do not no longer have, you know, all of these, you know, applications here. Um, but if I do want to, you know, re-enable that, I would just go to DL DCLI module enable. And then you can see I have the uh, CLI tools option here, so I can just do two. And so now that's been enabled. I can just run DCLI sync. And you can see where this is, you know, helpful because th that's a lot of packages to have to remember and to know right off the top of your head. So you can, you know, you could run, you know, pseudo Pac-Man in and then just list all of those, you know, consecutively and have that run. But this is just easier to have it in that module file. So I just know all those packages are being, you know, synced. So now it's saying that it's going to install all these packages. So I can go ahead and run that. And then it's going to, to install those packages that I have, you know, running there and it, Anything from the AUR, obviously, it's going to run for you to pick, you know, which ones you do want to have installed. All right. And so just like that, I have um, now successfully installed all those packages. Um, and then it's just updating the state and it'll, it'll finish uh, the sync. And so now the sync is complete. And so now I have you know all of these these packages here. So you saw like in the beginning of the, of the video, I had the uh, pipes running there. So if I wanted to you know run that again, you know it's obviously installed and and working again. So so yeah, so that, that's like the main things, and also the auto backup. So every time I, I run an update or do a DCLI sync, it's automatically backing up my system either using Snapper or Time Shift. You know before. I don't think I have any updates as of right now. Yeah, everything's um, up to date in my system, so I can't really show you that portion of it. Uh, but yeah, and, and then I also have um, the option for version pinning. And so, like, I had someone you know make a comment on I think I was like on a Reddit post or something, but that you know Arch does not su support version pinning, and uh, and the tool is the reason why it, it's supported essentially. So basically, all it's doing is removing the option for it to be updated when you do an update. So as long as you're using DCLI update and not your regular, you know, dash S Y U um, update option, then um, it will actually, you know, restrict that from happening. The only thing I have right now that is uh, pinned is my Hyperland version. And I only do this because the like hyper scrolling and some of the plugins do tend to break um, after uh, a major update within Hyperland. So I wait uh, to kind of make sure all those things are, you know, ironed out before I actually update my Hyperland system. You can do this with any package that you want. So you can actually just, you know, pin any version that you want. Um, so if you already have like something, you know, installed already, um, all you have to do is uh, DCLI pin and then the actual uh, package name. So if I wanted to do Hyperland or if I wanted to do Neary, uh, maybe even a kernel version, uh, whatever you want to do, you can pin it and it'll stay pinned uh, within your configuration there. And everything is, you know, good there. So so that's one of the things. And then also the option to run post-install uh, scripts, um, like after you enable a module. So like, for instance, with these, these, these window managers over here, I have an option to like update the dot files. So I put my dot files in the um, actual Arch config here. And all this is doing is just updating and changing the... Uh, well, not changing, but actually just backing up the current dot files um, that you have for Hyperland and like your GTK files and fish and like whatever the, the terminal and stuff that's being used. It's creating a backup and then adding my actual configuration for it. So like my kitty and all the theming and stuff like that. Um, it's adding these folders into your dot config and then backing up the old ones. So, so that's all the actual script is doing, but you can just add that, you know, post install script after you add um, all the packages that are necessary for it down the road what i want to have is eventually where you can share modules with each other so if i wanted to share my entire hyperlink configuration i could just share this module with you and then you can you know enable it on your system the only thing i'm trying to figure out is how the dot files and everything are going to be transferred because you have to have you know the dot files in your arch config folder or somewhere to you know grab it before you actually like install the module or, or else it'll just install all the packages and not be able to run the script because you don't have the information um, so i'm trying to figure out the best way to do that and i think i might have figured out that the best way is going to be doing it through an actual uh, GUI that you can actually install these and then you, I can upload all, you know, any share, shared modules into a separate repo. 
and then you can you know download them and be able to um, share modules between each other that way. So I'm really trying to make this like a cohesive, easy way for people to you know update their system and be able to share things. So that'd be just an awesome way to be able to share dot files, and not have to go to um, hoops to have everything you know shared through separate GitHub repositories and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of the goal in in doing everything. And so I have started on the actual GUI for this started building the the actual front end for it. I'm actually using Flutter for that because I'm just more familiar with Flutter than I am with Rust, especially for a front end application. Uh, so basically you can see here, um, I have the project and I'll just go ahead and run the actual project here so you can see what I have so far uh, with the GUI. So I don't have much yet. Um, it, a lot of these are you know, kind of just placeholders and um, it is you know pulling some information from my actual system, but a lot of it isn't actually completed, but this gives the idea of like kind of the, the route I'm trying to go with having a GUI system on it. So basically you'll be able to see your overview on you know all the information as far as enabled modules, additional packages, and then what your configuration, you know, structure and everything is, you know, pulled in. All the hosts that you have enabled, it may just be the one if you have the one, but if you have, you know, other hosts that you have, you know, that you want to manage. And then this is going to be the most like important, you know, part portion here is the actual like module section. So you'll be able to enable and disable modules straight from here without having to use this the CLI portion. Everything will be just, you know, clicks and and everything like that. Um, so I haven't got as far as to making these, you know, uh, truly enabled, but you know, you can, you know, you can search um, for different, you know, information and stuff in there. And then also, you know, use the different categories if you want to see all the CLI, CLI tools and see the, the packages that are, you know, within that option. And if there is a install script, you're going to see where that install script is, you know, stored. So yeah, so all of that is kind of in the works, not quite there yet. I haven't had like packages and, you know, all these other ones, you know, created or up and running yet. Uh, but I, I really want to be able to, you know, make this front end easy for kind of the for the new users to, you know, Linux or Arch Linux or whatever the case might be, or if you just want to have a uh, GUI front end uh, for your, your management of your DCLI tool and not have to go to the terminal every time, you know, that's just a nice tool to have. And then I do want to, you know, eventually create like a section where you can, you know, view other users' modules from within here and then enable them onto your system. So that's kind of the goal and, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish, you know, with everything uh, within uh, DCLI. So, yeah, de definitely let me know in the comments below like what you are looking for and kind of like some inspiration that I, you might want to give me for uh, you know adding new features and stuff within DCLI and how you like it and get, just give me some feedback you know kind of I started you know just making this for myself and making it a tool that I could use to make my arch um, install more like my NixOS install but then you know like I typically do I like to share you know all that with the, the community and everything like that so it's just me, <laughs> you know, creating this tool. So it's going to take some time to get it exactly where it needs to be. You're going to find bugs. You're going to find things like that. So just let me know, you know, create issues. Some other people have already created issues and I've, you know, tackled those as fast as I could. So yeah, so just let me know in the comments below what you think and kind of the direction of things that I have, you know, going forward or any suggestions that you might have. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoy my content, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. If you want to support me for, you know, tools and stuff like this, you can do so by either joining the membership on YouTube or joining me on Patreon, or you can actually um, just, you know, buy something on the shop. So yeah, other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.